you know, welcome for everyone. Um, you know, my name is Bo Harvey. I'm the marketing director for Hutch and, and Brianna Camper uh, is here as well. Uh, she's our customer she, support. So 95% of the time, if you call in <laughs> or email in, you're, I, I'm talking to you. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're here today to, to, to kind of help uh, ultimately folks that are new to the platform. Uh, we send this out to all of our folks that are on trial just to kind of help create some stickiness. I think a lot of times with technology, the way it can be, we try to make it as simple as we can, but there's a lot of buttons and features and, and I think it helps sometimes to get folks on and actually walk them through it. Uh, it helps us, um, you know, because we learn uh, more from the platform and how folks are interacting with it and possibly new uses, whether it be goats or cats or what have you. So uh, with that said today, uh, we are actually going to be looking uh, at if you've logged into Hutch and I don't know if you may have a separate screen or whatever, but um, let me know if you have any issues with hearing what I'm saying or seeing the screen as we go along. Again, this is a meeting. So if you have a question, it's very casual. Feel free just to unmic yourself and interrupt me at the time. And then we can address your question then. We'll also have to save a little time at the end for Q&A and obviously to, to, to network if anyone wants to do that. So um, if you've logged into Hutch, um, you know, a lot of times you can, you can access things from multiple points um, within the, the app itself. Um, the litters on the left-hand column uh, once you once you click that, uh, you'll have a drop down for the uh, features of or the functions of add new, uh, searching for all, um, looking into your archives, and obviously exporting uh, your list of of litters. Um, and Bree, feel free to jump in here as well uh, as as I'm going through this, and and feel free to lay in any of your comments and layer those in. Um, but, uh, you know, we started off with just a, a couple of examples for this demo, and then we're going to build one on the fly just to show everybody how easy it is. And as we go along, you know, there may be questions that you have. Uh, we'll try to answer them the best we can. Um, if we can't, I, I always joke a lot of times and say we'll make something up, right? But in all, in all seriousness, um, if there is a question we can't answer, what we'll want to do is, is go back to our, our team and developers and say, hey, this came up, um, this, this customer has this need or, you know, pointed this out and said, hey, this would be a great feature to have. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about the feedback portal, which if you'll notice on the left-hand column, I, uh, down near the bottom, if you have any suggestions or if you just want to go to the feedback portal and look at the other suggestions that folks have, have uh, placed there, um, certain desires that they want that, that help them, you know, operate their, their rabbitry uh, a little easier. You can look and actually upvote those if you want. So you can say, hey, yes, I'm going to raise my hand and say, this would be a great feature to have. Because ultimately, our, our, our design team goes back in and looks at that and says, hey, um, what do we do next? Uh, there's always something to improve upon. And let's try to put the things in that mean the most to our, to our users. So uh, that's the feedback portal, and we can we can certainly demo that real quickly if any of you need to. Um, so back to litters. Uh, just simply put, we're going to just go through each of the functions. Um, one of the first things that that you know we like to ask is, before we talk about litters too much, you know you might want to ask yourself, where are you in the process? Um, where are you in in your journey? Uh, you know of 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 rabbit, of, you know building your rabbitry. Uh, and when it comes to litters, you know are you in a position where you maybe acquired a, a, a doe who, who came from the breeder and, and she was either pregnant or possibly pregnant. Um, you know, do you have um, you know, a, a, a nesting box already built and you've got a doe that's ready to, to have her kits you know, any day? Um, did you just get Hutch and you wanna try to go back and recreate the litters and, and get those put in? So all of the functions that we'll, we'll go through today should answer most of those questions uh, regardless of where you are. So um, with the litters, uh, there's, a, there's a quick pull down um, uh, indicator and uh, menu here. And, it, and it's just, you know, again, there's many ways to get to most all of the functions uh, within our app. Um, and it gives you the, the option for uh, all uh, butchered and archived besides the ones that are, that are um, uh, current. Um, again, there's, there's the add new feature. So you can add new uh, inside of the module. You can add new on the left-hand column. And then of course, we put this big gigantic button here for those of you who just you know, have a hard time finding stuff. Um, I like this button the best. This is probably the one I use the most. Uh, next up would be uh, your sort button. Uh, so you can actually sort by uh, age, ID, uh, and then there are other filters that, that are available. And that's uh, a new filter feature that we did. It's much more expanded. Let me get my 
zoom window out of the way here. Um, so as you go through, if you're looking for, if you just want to search bucks, um, and I've built this instance out with about 20 rabbits. Um, if you haven't noticed, we creatively um, uh, named them after candy. Um, I'm not really sure why, but I think there was a, there were a lot of candy names that were just easy to come up with. Uh, so we have each of those named uh, for bucks, and we have a list of does. Uh, and then, of course, you can actually search by whether or not you have, you have an idea of when they were bred, when they were born. Um, if you go by IDs or cage numbers, uh, that can certainly help, I think, for larger breeders uh, with a lot of cages. So uh, lots of filter features up top. Um, and, and again, if, if you're really just in, in a hurry and you've got a lot of rabbits, you can just hit, hit the quick search button. Uh, type in any data that you that you can think of that might help search through uh, to find your rabbit uh, and, and it'll bring it up for you. Uh, these same types of features work the same way in the breeders uh, option as they do for the litters. So um, it's very intuitive. We try to make it uh, as simple as possible. So uh, what I've done is I've created a couple of, uh, of litters and we'll just kind of take a peek at these. Um, again, we've added photos. If you don't have a photo for your um, your, your litters um, for your rabbit, it'll actually just come up here with, a, with an icon. And I believe, I believe I've got one stored somewhere here that we'll see. Um, but again, uh, if you actually just click on the litter itself, uh, it will give you the information on the inside, uh, again, for the actual names of the, the buck and the doe, um, all the data about when they were bred, um, cage numbers, uh, how many kits were, um, there were that were live. And you'll see some, some mimicking dashboard features over here of the total weight of, of, that, uh, uh, of, that, of that breeding, uh, the age, and, and certainly the survival rate too. And we'll talk a little bit about how to mark uh, kits uh, if for some reason uh, they are dead. Uh, Bree, I was wondering if you, if you might wanna jump in here and just talk a little bit about the, uh, the color indications for um, defining whether or not you're going to actually, when it comes time to actually sex the, uh, the oh, litter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, when you have your new rabbits and that are newly born like a few days and you don't know sex yet, they're gonna appear uh, grayed out like the first two uh, shown in the, in the instance here. But if you have, uh, if you know the sex either from birth or later on, you can always go in and change it uh, red or pink toe and then, and then you can change it to buck later on if you look at it later and see if it changed sex later on. Uh, and the, uh, Sometimes even the uh, the color of the instance will change if the rabbit is is dead or culled. Uh, it'll get like a lighter color of gray to right. better help you visually indicate how um, how your litter is looking. Yeah, and and to that point, um, if you notice, I've clicked on this one kit that's originally when you start off, they're all going to be in gray because they haven't been determined. Uh, once you click it click a, a, once you determine a sex, right or wrong, uh, once you determine it and you it, save it that- can't go back. Yeah, you save that change. You can't go back to making it neutral again. Um, but again, you know, the feature is simple. You can, you can edit it by actually clicking it uh, and going in and inside of the module and actually changing what you need there. Or you can hit this pull down uh, menu, again, uh, the drop down menu, uh, which will give you uh, another, internal menu of how to actually get to each of these. Uh, one thing I would mention, if, if I can go back to all the archives, um, if, you, if you do archive something, uh, let's say we, we now, if you notice we had two instances here in the beginning, now we only have one. So if you're looking for something, uh, you can go back into the archives. And I had actually archived uh, Snickers and Hershey uh, yesterday. So you can see that we have not, as, as a breeder, we, we don't have a photograph of this one. So we're gonna put in this standard icon uh, of a rabbit. Uh, but if you have a, if you accidentally uh, archive it, you can easily come in here and then un unarchive it. And I do wanna mention Switch that back. if all of your animals in, uh, in the litter have become breeders themselves or they've all been sold or something happens and they all die for whatever reason, the litter will automatically be archived. 
Yes, a uh, really good point. Uh, actually, one of the, uh, sorry, let me move my Zoom window again. It's a little bit in the way. On the, uh, on the archive set, um, I actually plugged in uh, uh, here. We have, we have four. Uh, so one of the things we, we like to review today would be uh, what happens when a kit uh, uh, dies. Uh, and so with, with, our, with our selection, uh, we can actually identify if it died and then we mark it as dead. Uh, the important thing here would be to put in a cause of death. Uh, I put and if, one... you don't know, if you don't know the cause of death, you don't have to put it here. It's just as option to better help mm -hmm. you keep records. Yeah, and, and you know, typically, you know, what are the reasons why they die? Um, and, you know, I, I, for an example, I put in stillborn, uh, but, uh, you know, you could certainly click uh, new and then, um, you know, uh, you know, we could uh, we could just put you know GI stasis, for mm -hmm. example. Like one of my options is predation uh, due to rodents or dogs. Oh yes, mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll you'll save this cause of death, and then it will be located. And as you see, there were four here, and now there are only three, and we have one that skipped down here and and, and went into the died category. Um, the system is going to automatically assign a uh, an identification number for each kit, uh, whether you give it a a name or any type of an ID yourself. Uh, but then that ID will will drop down into the into the died category. Um, I think I think for for our barn anyway, we like to uh, make sure we're pretty accurate with all of our records and classify things because um, not in today's session, but when we get to reporting. Um, looking at reports and, and, and taking a look at your, your misses or your deaths and, and you know, ultimately looking at which, which breeders uh, you know, have, the, have the highest survival rate uh, or, or even the highest turnout rate. You know, sometimes we, we joke with Netherlands that it's really hard to get a lot of rabbits from them because you know, they, just don't, they just don't breed a lot uh, or they don't produce a lot. But you know, we'll have some that consistently give us one or two and then we'll have some that consistently give us three or four. So you also have that lovely dwarf gene to worry about. Yes, exactly. And I would imagine for, for meat breeders, uh, it's probably even more um, uh, important to, to, to keep accurate records so you can track these uh, through the reporting to find out uh, which ones are gonna give you the best yield. So uh, at the very least, um, when you mark these uh, as, as died, um, as having died, they'll be recorded um, uh, and they'll be taken out of that, that actual litter. Uh, so, so let me go back to this uh, particular dashboard. Uh, these are the ones that we have currently live. And then once you click inside, again, the, the functions that you see in general, they're, they're somewhat repetitive. Um, if you need to, again, edit this litter for whatever reason, uh, one of the discussions that comes up a lot of times um, as we talk about editing a litter is the litter ID. And uh, different folks have different ways of, of coming up with a litter ID. Uh, you may already have one that's established, but if you're if you're new, uh, there's no. Um, I don't guess there's any one perfect way. I think it's a matter of what works best for you and and your rabbitry, um, and ultimately, you know, your your way of identifying litters could change as you as you grow. Yeah. Uh, we actually had some folks contributed a really great article this week on our our Facebook group, um, which if you haven't joined, um, feel free to go to 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 Facebook uh, group. It's listed under Hutch. Uh, and you may also find it at this point, it's being relisted as Everbreed. Um, but someone the had commented. The join link for that is also in the help section mm -hmm. on the or on the left side. On the left hand side, yeah. Thanks for thanks for pointing that out. Um, but uh, some folks will actually do. I think Brianna, we we talked about how you take the first letter of the doe and the first letter of the buck, and yeah, yeah. Is that is that how you do it too, buck and doe? Yeah, buck and doe, and then the date or. I remember two litters that um, I just put Texas frost because they were born right smack dab in the middle of that cold spell we had in February. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's one quick way to identify them. Um, mm -hmm. And if anybody on the call has a has a suggestion on how you do litters as well and you want to share them, feel free to unmic and, and come on and, and share that too. 
Um, prefix um, over on the right hand column again um, prefixes can vary i've seen prefixes uh, that are coded and and uh, from some of our users and you know we have no idea what they are uh, some are just uh, the initials of the barn uh, so in this case ar and for our example here the name of our rabbit tree is anytown rabbit tree so the prefix for the barn is ar uh, i've seen some people actually type out the prefix uh, in, in the complete name of their barn. So that is the prefix to their, to the, to the name of their rabbit. Um, and you know, if you have this, if you have this set up in your account, I'm sorry to cut you off. Mm -hmm. uh, as your prefix, it will autofill. Autofills. Yeah. 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 And again, again, you can go back into that, that setting and you can change the, the prefix if you'd like. Um, you know, I find probably more breeders than not are just using initials. Don't you see that too, Brianna? Yeah, I use initials too. Yeah. Uh, and then again, if you need to make changes uh, in terms of the breed or, you know, the buck, um, and then let's talk a little, just a little bit about this tiny little square that's here. Um, if you mouse over it, it will actually give you the option to pull in um, anything that's been archived. So sometimes of, of folks will, will ring in to us on customer service and they'll say, hey, I can't find this. Uh, I can't find this rabbit or it's disappeared or it's not coming up in my choice system. It could be that it's been archived. So if you click this um, button, you'll actually uh, be able to select from the ones that were actually archived. So if we- And if I may butt in again, this is how um, people can use uh, Hutch to have like stud buck you put in a stud book into your account and then archive it. And then if you click that button right there, it'll show up on that list. Ah, yeah, good note, good note there. Okay, so uh, bottom line, you know, uh, all, the, all the, the buttons and, you know, all the tabs and everything are, we try to make it as user-friendly as possible. Um, so if you're, if you're not finding it one way, there's a chance you're gonna be able to find it in, in one or two other different ways. A um, couple of other things just before we, we move on uh, would be to look at the tabs that are at the top here inside of the breed, uh, inside of the litter profile. Uh, we're on the kits tab at the moment. Uh, timeline, uh, the only thing I had in the timeline for this one was a, was a dental check. Um, and, you know, you have the icon here for, you know, what, what I use is health. It looks like the little suitcase with the plus on it. Um, and then I'll, just simply for this demo, I've added a dental check in here, put the date. Uh, so again, you can either edit this or you can delete it if you find that it's not necessarily right within the timeline. Uh, stats, uh, again, uh, this gets back into the reporting piece. And, you know, I, I threw some weights in for the, uh, for, the, for the litter that was here, but you can see our survival rate, um, you know, the growth rate. Uh, again, depending on how you, um, how you as, a, as a rabbitry track your own weights, uh, typically, you know, are you doing a weight, you know, uh, one week after birth, two weeks after birth, four weeks after birth, what, whatever your, your cadence is, um, it, it will actually continue to show on, on these stats. Uh, and then finally in notes, um, you know, these are notes that we can put not only for ourselves, but for each other uh, in, in the barn. Um, so if someone else is watching over or, you know, we've got records on someone for me, uh, after a while, you know, all the rabbits can begin to blur and you can't remember which one had which illness or activities. So it's probably one of my favorite features um, uh, of our software is, is, is are the notes feature. Um, if you add a note and you save it, um, you know, it'll, it'll list it. And then if you put in a second note uh, and then you save that, it'll list it underneath it. So it kind of keeps a running uh, a tally of what's happening in this litter. Um, you know, for example, if you have uh, a litter and you have a rabbit that has a, an illness like a tilted head, um, you could put the tilt. You could put the description of the the illness in here with the date, um, and that you know we started to observe the tilted head. You know, on day two we we took it to the vet. Uh, it was treated, and it was treated with this medicine. Uh, so, you know, as you have future, future uh, uh, issues, you can say, oh yeah, that information is, is inside of our Everbreed software. I can go back and look and see what was, the, what was the cause, what was the treatment, what was the medication, how much did it cost us? All of those records can be held within our software. 
So, um, you know, feel free to, to use these however you want, but uh, I think there's a lot of great um, uh, things you can use for the notes area. Right, Brie? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, um, I'm not sure if we've touched on, I think we've touched on most all the points here. Um, just to show you how, how go ahead, Brie. We forgot to discuss on the multiple ways to add a letter. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that's what I'm going to do right now. So, do you want to you want to kind of talk us through it, and I'll 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 add one as we go. Oh sure. Um, if you have a um, if you have a letter already within your account uh, when you first started, you don't have to uh, make a you don't have to mark down that the doe gave birth, whatnot. You can just go to the add new button. Uh, anywhere here and then just put the information here um, when the when the animal was gestated when it gave birth who the rabbit is and um, how many babies there were how many dead and it'll calculate that for you okay uh, good and uh, also and here, as I mentioned, it yeah, will here, um, with, with the prefix, it'll autofill that. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the time, um, our software will uh, predict the uh, the litter ID. So sometimes, on very rare occasions, it will autofill that as well with the next mm -hmm. step. So if you do like litter one, litter two, litter three, uh, it will uh, progress. Okay. And then the uh, the breed choice for default for us was was Netherlands Dwarf. But if you just hit the uh, if you just hit the space button, all of your other selections will come up here. Or if you just start to uh, just start to type it, um, it'll it'll pop up. So let's just drop in a Rex, and then we can choose, and we'll just pick a couple of names here for random. And we'll say we bred them today. No, let's say we bred them month ago yeah because a um, a rabbit's gestation cycle is yeah. like 31 days we'll call it and there we are so there is our new litter um and you can see that uh nerds and kisses have had a have had a litter uh they had uh, four babies and uh we're set to go mm -hmm. another uh, way is like say for example you bought a rabbit and you want to breed it there um she's not bred now but you want to breed her when she's acclimated and such uh you can do that by going into the dashboard and then selecting the breed option the blue breed button this will uh show a breeding chain and you can edit this to whatever you need. This is how uh, multiple users um, utilize our software for other animals. Uh, they just need to uh, edit the breeding chain um, to match the breeding cycle of their animal. Like for example, I raise quail along, along with rabbits and I have a specialty breeding chain for, for my birds. Um, in this case, uh, you will select the buck and doe involved. And then the, uh, the breeding chain that you want to use, I think right now for this instant, we only have a default. Yeah, I actually put a longer chain in here. Uh, I did one demo just to create okay. <clears throat> um, for, for us, for example, um, we added uh, you know, checking teeth. Um, that we like to uh, pick a date to actually sex them. Uh, we actually pose them and photograph them at that at that age just to see what their structure and their their conformation looks like. Uh, and then uh, you know, just I put in some silly things like check and trim the nails. Mm -hmm. um, if we've decided that we're not going to keep them for uh, you know for grow outs for show, then then we'll post them for sale. So for our rabbitry, um, you know, the, uh, posting a rabbit for sale really doesn't have so much to do with, with the rabbit as it does mm -hmm. the business. 
Uh, but we I go ahead and put all customers use that as well. They'll have a specialty date to put it online for sale. Yeah, and if they've kept it for a period of time, they say, okay, it's, it's time to reduce it uh, and put it on sale because we need to move it. Um, and then again, you know, I chose just to put three three weights in here. Um, and so, just yeah. for this breeding chain, um, starting with the breed option and going down into the birth. All of that information will be marked towards the female that mm -hmm. is currently pregnant. And once the birth has been recorded, then all of these records will be related to the litter that has been created. Yeah, so the data essentially follows the, the doe. Yes. Yeah, and that's, that's, uh, that's an important point to know for, for, for folks that are using uh, our every breed software. Um, and then, of course, if, if, the, uh, if the chain doesn't work for you, um, if you want to create your own chain, uh, you can do that. Um, let's close here. In, in the edit. Um, sorry. Let me go back to. Yeah, so I've got, uh, I've got a default chain and a long chain here. Upper right. There you go. And when, when you go to your settings tab, um, it'll allow you to actually add a new chain or edit an existing chain or just delete one altogether. Uh, you can also delete these on the fly uh, with these small uh, tabs, again, to change the date, or you can, you can simply just hit the trash can and get rid of them. But if you wanna add a new chain, uh, demo chain, we'll call this one. And we can save the changes. And then it's going to default to the, the standard, uh, um, I guess, categories or tasks. And here you can just simply click on the add task button, uh, pick the icon that, that works, that's more associated with what it is that you're trying to do. Uh, and, you know, it could be, a, we'll call it a, a birthday salad. Uh, and it's, it happens on their birthday and it happens in 365 days from the time they they're born. So, you know, silly, but you know, it gives you an idea of how easy it is to set that up. Make sure to save the changes. Uh, then when we go back to our breeders, I'm sorry, dashboard, uh, go back into breeding and we hit the chain, there's our demo chain. So you can see how easy that is and how that functions. So again, you can customize this to whatever it is you may need for, for your, your own rabbitry or whatever animals you happen to be tracking through here. And with the days system, the uh, no matter if it's following the the dough or the kits, the the day will always start on day zero for the date that the dough has been impregnated. Yeah. So for example, with rabbits that are born on J on day 31. So day 63 would be like their first weight and uh, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and then I want to, uh, before we move on to pedigrees um, and, 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 and asking questions, can we talk about, uh, do you want to walk us through actually fostering um, a, a, uh, from a litter? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, say for example, if um, you have a rabbit that only gave birth to one rabbit or um, only has a few babies and uh, you need to, uh, with rabbits especially, they need to be together to stay warm. So this function is really important. Um, All right, so on this- can move on on this uh, on this group we just created, I'm just going to mark that three died, and okay. uh, and then we'll have one left that we can foster off. There we go. And say, for example, you have this one rabbit, and you have to quickly move it to another nest box. You can go down here into the options menu and click foster, and it will give you an option to click another um, litter for that rabbit to now belong to. 
um, in terms of record keeping, this rabbit will maintain its pedigree for the uh, original mother and father, but the information will be on a different litter. Yes, we're going to transfer this to litter AR1. Okay. And so it's still recorded here. Refresh it. Yep. And now we go back. And you see that it's now been transferred and we transferred it into AR1. And now we have uh, this particular rabbit. And, and it will show up as a little copy icon. Yeah, right here. The uh, profile has been copied over. And you can also tell the difference because this one was, was just born and we didn't have a recorded weight for it. That's another indicator um, if you're if you're looking for it. Sometimes is that you know you probably haven't weighed it since it's since it's newborn. Um, it's probably a good idea to uh, just know that this one was fostered. What I've seen people do is name them foster, or name mm -hmm. them after the uh, the litter ID that they came from. Because you don't see these notes until you open mm -hmm. the edit window. Correct. So yeah. um, you can temporarily name them just to have quicker access. We, we tend to call ours FedEx. <laughs> if, we have a, if we have a fostered one, we call it FedEx. Cute. <laughs> okay, so now you can see that it's fostered. And it still has the the original uh, number with it as well. The original pedigree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions on uh, on this segment? Is anyone still with us? <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm wondering. <clears throat> can you do weights on individual rabbits from yeah. the litters? I just I, well, I I know we can add in weights, and I've been adding in weights, but I want to see the actual growth chart. And if it's trending towards the baseline. Okay. Uh, you can see the growth chart on the um, on the reports page of that litter. Uh, in regards to, do you want to uh, weigh them all at once, or do you weigh one baby one day and then one the next? No, just like a single a single rabbit. Not the entire litter. Okay. Uh, for that, you would go back into the um, the litter list. Where not not the litter list. Excuse me. The uh, the the page where you see the kits. And um, then there is a option to weigh that baby as a individual because if you see here. Uh, on the dashboard, you can weigh the babies as a group, but here you can weigh the rabbit as just an individual one rabbit. Are we answering your question correctly? Well, I want to be able to to basically go to the stats dashboard, type in the rabbit, and then see how it's trending. So I know I can add multiple weights here. Right. Yeah. You've got Is this part there a figured way out. To go to see the stats dashboard. Mm -hmm. like this or is this well, an individual rabbit kind of getting into some into a topic that we haven't yet covered um but this is the uh, the uh, uh the reports page and you can kind of tell based on the first um the first graph how how babies are performing in terms of weight. Yeah, what I okay. see I here is on, on interface and I can see. Uh, yeah, like the stats maybe. page is going to show this particular chart for growth. And that's going to show each individual baby. Yeah, and I'm only, I, I honestly, for, for this demo and what I probably could do for future demos would be to go in as these, as these kits age, let's weigh them again, you know, yeah, Even if we just weigh them again in a week, you'll start to see this chart um, mature. Mm -hmm. okay. But I believe this may be the chart you're looking for. Yep, that's it. 
Yeah. I'm so, on it and I can click on individual you know, routes. So how much you can weigh them. You can weigh them daily if you want, uh, mm -hmm. even though that might not yield the best results. Uh, I personally recommend like every three weeks. Yeah, there's a, there's a growth chart, at least for Flemish, that's recommended in some of the guides. And it says at three months, they should weigh this, and mm -hmm. so much they should weigh this. And so that's, that's what I kind of had been doing. But this is good. This is exactly what I needed. I just needed to know where it was. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's under, the, uh, under the profile, and then you have these four tabs. Just click Stats. Um, and again, I, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a matter of, of having a, a matured dashboard, um, you know, for the demo, uh, I'll go back in for this particular one and, and we'll put some extra weights in just to kind of see what it looks like. So good question. No, oh, and, and it's good to know that we've, we've actually, we've actually, uh, answered that one already. We've got it built. I, awesome. I can say with the kitchens, we also weigh them every day. So oh. we see how they grow uh, to they are 13 weeks old. Okay. So that is quite important for, for us because if, we, if some uh, kitten isn't uh, getting weight, we have to do some, uh, help the mother. So that's quite important for us to have a growth chart or see so they are going uh, forward. Yeah, yeah, and 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 again to 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 Bree's statement, you know, this particular discussion, I think we we'll do a session on reporting, uh, mm -hmm. and and build this out. But you can see that the reports are, you know, not only from a financial standpoint, but just collecting raw data um, mm -hmm. of survival rates, uh, who has the best survival rate. I mean, you you probably know in your mind which does put out the the most successful uh, litters, uh, and yeah. ones that just seem to be problematic over and over and over. Either they have a complete miss or you know they have too many stillbirths or whatever but those that's costly in terms of a lot of assets whether it be uh, <laughs> financial or emotional um, but uh, the the dashboard uh, the reporting dashboard does keep you know a lot of really great stats so uh, spend some time and in there with your own uh, rabbitry or, or this dashboard here um, this will only show the combined weight of the litter mm -hmm. for that rabbit Okay, uh, if there are any more questions, we're gonna take the last, uh, I'm gonna say 10 to 15 minutes and really just touch base on, on pedigrees. Um, it's a huge uh, subject, but we, we did wanna kind of just uh, talk a little bit about pedigrees just in general. Um, if you haven't been through it, uh, it can be a little daunting. Um, and again, we are continuing, continuously making modifications on the pedigree. Uh, we understand how important that, that piece is, that element is for for breeders and we're just, you know, we're, that's probably one of the things we look at the, the most in terms of just tweaks and how can we make it better? Um, you know, you're trying to take, you know, three, four, five, six, you know, 10 generations and, and getting it to all print and, you know, sharing it. So there's a lot of elements there, uh, but just and to just walk- just real quick, this is the, uh, the new um, breeder layout we're testing. Right. Uh, um, it may not be available to you yet, but we are slowly rolling that out to new uh, to new people over time. Uh, you'll get a uh, pop up whenever you log in saying that you've been invited to to test this new feature. You can accept or deny it whenever you like. Yeah, and thanks for mentioning that. Uh, we we are um, we are launching uh, new breeder features. I think we're up to 50% now um, as of maybe today or, okay. or, or at the end of today, there'll be about 50% of the folks. So uh, if any of you on the call would, would don't have it and you'd like to be on it, uh, just send an email uh, to, I'm not sure which finger, which direction I'm pointing at, but my email is up here, bow at, at everbreed.com. And I'll make sure that the developers get you switched over if you're not on already. Um, uh, so that's really what the, the instance that we're looking at here is for. Uh, so, so with that, uh, let's just kind of take a, a, let's dip our toe in the water, take a quick look at it. And then for our next, uh, for next month's, um, zoom meeting, we're going to, we're going to do a, a deeper dive into pedigrees and, uh, who knows, maybe we'll start dabbling in some reporting as well. So, uh, Bree, do you want to start us off here or? With the pedigree? Yeah. Um, sure. Um, when you first log into Hutch, you'll 
see the dashboard. If you want to see a, ra a rabbit's pedigree or an animal's pedigree, you have to go into their uh, in, into your breeder list and then click on the animal that you want to see. Oops, sorry. Breeder list. Uh, and there are a couple of options here too. You have a list layout. Uh, and then you, if you toggle, you actually have this big giant tile layout. So whichever's the best for, for you and in, in, in your viewing. All right, so do we wanna pick a certain one? Um, I think it's- Just pick one by random. No, pick one I, I actually built out. Um, I, let's see if we can find it. It's, it's Kisses, I think. Yeah, Kisses, I think, has a, may have one that's built out. And Let's then see. pedigree is the, um, the third, the, the third tab over. And with these new updates to the pedigree, it may take just a little bit of time to load, but it should be all there when it's done. Um, this is the new breeder layout. You can expand it or uh, like zoom in or zoom out whenever like you want to see the whole pedigree at once. Uh, you can expand these tiles as well uh, to view all of it, the information. Um, I think it's on the on the on the right side. Oh, yeah, you can expand all you can expand them one at a time or you can click this button upper right and it'll expand everything, which can, you know, depending on the size screen of, of uh, display that you're on, it, it, it could be up to, it could be a lot. Um, you can zoom in and zoom out. Um, of course, you can probably do that on your computer as well, depending on what kind of system you have. I think the big thing here, um, you know, mainly would be to, uh, to build these out uh, and how you, you know, how you go about uh, expanding the data, um, showing any particular notes you have on, on a rabbit, or if you want to add a note, uh, you know, I bought this from Bree, uh, Anna, and we can add that note simply. And then it, again, it's placed in here for future, future viewing, but for right now, I can actually close that show note. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess the big the big pieces would be to actually do an import. Uh, if you have um, uh, breeders, if you're in the breeder profile and you want to import uh, a pedigree from either another Hutch user uh, from Evans software or from another rabbit, uh, you can use these import links. And we'll go over that a little bit more in detail in our next session. Mm -hmm. you, you can generate a PDF version and you're typically going to get this, this uh, pop-up that says, you know, due to paper limitations, because normally the, the paper of all, most of our computers is eight and a half by 11 or maybe an A4, um, but only six secondary fields can fit uh, in the fourth generation print. Uh, at this moment, we've selected uh, by default is, is a 10, a 10 second secondary fields. Um, and you can click this to not show it again, or you can just simply proceed. Now with the fields that they do show, I have made sure that the fields in the later generations are the most important and the ones that uh, will get you uh, certified into uh, your rabbit breeding organizations. This may be different for other animals and moving forward, we will take that into consideration. Yeah, good call. So is this, um, is this import button available to us today? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you show me where to go again to find that? It's still under litter or something. Uh, no, we're under breeders. Let me go back. So on the left-hand side, we go to breeders and then just uh, select your, your uh, rabbit. And then there's a series of tabs along the type um, along the top, which is which is a different um, a different kind the of a use, will, user will interface. The old version too. Okay, so you have to create the rabbit first. Yes. You'll have to have the rabbit in there first. Okay. 
And now, what, I, file, what file formats can you upload? I know it says Evans. Uh, yeah, so it's for, uh, actually for the breeders. Um, what I do is I go to breeders uh, and then you can add new, which is one, or you can add many. Uh, when, you when you click the many, you're going to get this gorgeous window that comes up and really lays it out for you. So are you coming from Evans or from somewhere else? No. So what happens is I bought five rabbits okay. at convention mm -hmm. this year. And, I, and she sends me the pedigrees through email. Mm -hmm. And they're in .htm and .xpdx. Okay. That is, a, that is an Evans pedigree. Oh, yeah. Uh, so now, import, import that, uh, okay. the really important one is the .html. HTM right here. HTM. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I'll try it afterwards. Yeah. And if you have any issues, just reach out. Um, it, and we, we put it there because, you know, obviously Evans is, is uh, it, it's, it's, it's been a, um, you know, uh, a software that folks have adopted over the years. And, and you know, when, when they get ready to switch over, uh, having this feature just makes it easier for, uh, for us to do that. Okay. And then I've received a couple pedigrees from some of the judges that are, that, you know, that do thousands of rabbits and they're from golden, golden pedigree. I forget the name. Uh, of the global name. pedigree. Global. Anyway, we can, we can talk about it later. It doesn't matter. But yeah, if you, uh, you that's going to save me. That's going to save me a ton of time. I can <laughs> it does, uh, and we actually have. Uh, if you want to import, for example, a CSV file, which is uh, CSV stands for comma separated values. It's it's just kind of a, a different version of um, of what you see for um, uh, Excel file. Uh, so instead of it dot being a dot XL or XLS. Um, it's a .csv. Uh, and I actually created this instance by uploading um, all of these rabbits from a CSV. And uh, you could just build the CSV file with, with uh, uh, this example file. If you look here, uh, when you click on this example file link, it will actually download a simple ex uh, example. And it, and it has each of the headers that we actually uh, use for uploading. And I'm gonna open this in Excel real quick. Um, please let me know. Do you see the Excel spreadsheet at this moment? No, oh. it looks like okay. it's just the Hutch screen still. Yeah. Hold on just a second. I'm going to stop that and then I'm going to reshare. And tell me if you see it now. Yes. Okay. So when you download that example file, uh, it will give you the headers uh, here in row one. And this is all you really need to fill in. So sometimes, for example, we get we we'll get pedigrees that are almost handwritten, um, particularly by really, you know, older older uh, breeders. You know, they'll they'll do it old school, and then they either take a picture and send it to us, or fax it, or mail it, or whatever. Uh, so it's it's helpful to go in if you have number a number of these and fill these uh, cells in, uh, and then you just save it as a CSV file because this is is actually a CSV file now. Uh, and then you go back to uh, your dashboard and let me reshare our screen here. And you're going to click this import CSV button and instantly it will, it will pop up and you will wind up with, sorry. it will import into a tile version or uh, excuse me, a list version, just like this. Um, and it will have each of the cells will be active. So if you made a mistake or if you see that a, a breed is missing or you have the wrong sex designated or whatever, you can change it before you save everything. So super friendly, pretty intuitive to walk through. Um, so that, that, that should definitely help you uh, save a lot of time manually inputting, in, inputting the stuff. Um, all right, so uh, back to the dashboard and the, the pedigree. Oops, sorry. You love that breeding. Much time left, but do you guys have the goats or the chickens or cats or anything that in? Um, inside? not yet. Uh, we do plan on implementing that later next year. Okay. Um. 
but you can uh, add uh, goats and cats uh, into a breeding chain and edit it um, very similar to um, to the uh, breeding habits of a goat or a cat. Um, like very quickly, Bo, can you go into the um, breed chain uh, edit page again? Mm -hmm. This is the page where you would um, change all of this information and um, uh, reflect other species. So yeah, so here you you just have it renamed, and then you would I'll would put right the back. say again. I'll be okay. I'll be right back. Yeah. So uh, here you would simply um, yeah uh, name your chain, and then um, again there would be a, a different uh, gestation period, and you know how you'll handle that, <laughs> whether you have a nesting box or something similar to that. Uh, but you can actually build those out here, and then save them um, as well. Uh, and then let me just show two last things on uh, the pedigree. Uh, we'll pull up our, our example and going back to pedigree. Uh, two of the last features that, that you'll find, um, and we'll go over in depth a little bit more later, but uh, you can generate the PDF. We talked about that earlier. Just click here and it'll, it'll pull, pull it up in your you know, Adobe Acrobat PDF reader. Uh, you can also click the shareable link uh, so if you just want to share the information with someone, uh, but not necessarily print it off for them, or I guess give them uh, an incredible amount of access to it. Uh, so this is now inside of our browser, and you can simply uh, copy this link and share it, or you can just share it from here with, with someone else. This is also how you um, can import a pedigree from, uh, from another user because um, you can copy the link up here and then import it. Uh, if like, say for example, one of your friends um, uses Hutch as well, like for example, Bo, can you uh, copy the link up here? Yes. Um... And go to a rabbit that does not have a pedigree. You're saying uh, copy the URL? Yes. Okay, and then we're going to go back to a rabbit that does not have a pedigree. Actually, I just um, noticed that this one doesn't. Yeah, this one uh, does. So very quickly, like go to kisses. Yeah, go back to kisses. Yeah. Because it, it has a little bit of a pedigree. Just a minute. And then open up her public link. Mm -hmm. And then we can put this back into Fireball. Mm -hmm. Like this would also help, like say, for example, Kisses and Fireball are our brothers. Okay, so now we wanna, uh, we wanna go back to Pedigree. And then import. And import import from a hutch link, and here's and the you place the link here. Mm -hmm. uh, it will uh, show a demo of the of the link, so you can check over, and then if everything looks okay, you can confirm or deny it. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we're going to say everything's okay, and we'll save this import. And now we see that it's here inside of Fireball. Okay, so we'll definitely put that uh, that on our list of things to talk about um, on our next uh, on our next call uh, in terms of of doing the shareable. And then the last piece would be just the pedigree settings. Uh, feel free to play around with this; you really can't break it. Um, but what I do want to just point out is there are a couple of tabs in here. Uh, you have both a style tab, which gives you the option the options to uh, change your border settings. 
to change the color of uh, the pedigree settings. If you like the, the typical pink and blue, or if you pre prefer to go with like a green and red type uh, setup. Uh, the layouts, uh, horizontal versus uh, vertical. And then of course the content itself, um, we do have uh, switches here that allow you to leave certain uh, pieces of information off. Uh, if you're not interested in, in, in doing the champion or the legs or the registration number, um, you can leave those, you can switch those fields um, off. Um, and then lastly, just for the, the generations themselves, um, if you want to change the number of generations that you're showing on the pedigree, uh, those can be um, run up to eight generations. Um, if you'd like, and then just apply those settings here. And then you'll see those changes. So we, you know, when we change the color, um, all of that changed here. So those are some of your basic highlights. Um, again, for um, pedigree building. Uh, Bree, was there anything else you wanted to add? Um, I've just got a couple of other things I want to mention before we sign oh, off. We're all caught up. Okay. Uh, just two things, uh, as Bree said earlier today, um, we, you, can, you can catch us down here in the support channel. Uh, any questions you might have, we have a knowledge base that uh, you can search uh, and actually find uh, a lot of the questions that you may need answered. Uh, just if you want to do some self-study, that's a great uh, resource. Uh, the feedback portal, again, is if you have any suggestions that you'd like to see uh, us do to enhance um, all the features that we have. Uh, the Facebook group, uh, you can click here and it'll take you directly to it without any questions. And if you need to reach us, you can email us at this button. Uh, one last thing I will mention uh, that I like just to, to share with everyone, uh, under the account settings in your upper right hand corner, uh, there's your referral code. Uh, so this sort of helps us obviously reach new uh, rabbit uh, uh, breeders. Um, obviously, um, we want to give you, a, you know, a reward that we making it easy for you here. Just copy this link uh, and then it'll, it'll copy it to your clipboard. If you go to your social channels or any of your emails or anytime you're contacting somebody, uh, maybe another rabbit friend, uh, share this link with them. Uh, we'll give you a $5 credit when, you're, when your friend joins uh, off of your own building. Um, and you can use this, uh, this code wherever you like, as often as you like, uh, and, and our system will keep track of that for you. So um, I guess if there aren't any, I just wanna, uh, if Bree doesn't have anything else, I'm just gonna pause there before we uh, depart and see if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask us. We do wanna thank everybody for coming today for sure. So this is Amy, and I think you touched on it, but I just want to make sure I, I'm understanding clearly. So we go back to that original page on the main dashboard. If I wanted to do, let's say, goats instead of rabbits, and then it would be, does it show it in a different tab, or does it act like it's um, all the, part of the data and I got to break it out? Are you discussing the breeding chain or... Um, I'm sorry, I think like I missed a different, the like a different breed of rabbit uh, of animals. So like if I have uh, rabbits in one set right. and then I want to do like my my goats mm -hmm. okay. in another, will I have uh, a different tab or do it, do they just count so then those? You can go that, in I'm I'm sorry. Um for that you can go into the um the breeding chain settings and then uh, mimic the uh mimic the uh, uh the gestation time for that animal i don't know goats or, or cats but uh, I, so I think i think what she's okay. asking so i just did have to select the out of the data that's mm -hmm. provided like all yeah. the charts the, the the animals i want to track so that way i manually have to do hey these are the goats and i have to select those names to get the stats right. for that set versus like having a separate tab and the data is sorted separately no, yeah, we're going I, to implement that mm -hmm. later on when we fully implement other uh, species. But for right now, this is how it's done. And it's it wasn't even intended. It's just something that uh, users have found a way around. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the problem. That's what just, I thought you were saying. I just wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. oh, no worries. Hey. Can you just uh, use uh, categories and have a category for goats and category for uh, rabbits? Yes, you can also use categories as well, but if you want to use the breeding chain, you will have to go in and edit that manually. Uh, you don't have to edit it each time. You can just make one and done, but whenever you go into the breed list, like go to the dashboard and then breed, 
uh, you can select the uh, the breeding chain from that list. Okay, okay. I was just thinking if we, because if you are in the breeder list, you can see in categories if they what kind of animal it is. Mm -hmm. If you categorize them with uh, goats and rabbits, then you see all the rabbits are rabbits, and then we'll mm -hmm. have the rabbit chain, and the goats will have the goat chain. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of like yeah. New Zealand's versus like Flemish giants. So you'd have right. one category. Because they mm -hmm. have the yeah, we're, we're progressing to that. And, um, and I think it's really great that we've, we, we have someone who's actually a, a cat breeder. Uh, and, and then we've got, we've got another uh, attendee that's doing, you know, rabbits and, and other animals. You know, this is the future of, of Everbreed. And again, why we've, we've decided to rebrand ourselves uh, from Hutch and Barn Tracks to Everbreed, because it definitely is a, a tool that we feel like that, you know, uh, other animals could certainly be included with. All right. Well, fantastic. Um, are there any other questions? I just want to be respectful of everyone's time. We've run over just a little bit, but there's been a few mentions in the chat. Yeah, I think uh, for some reason I can't reach that right now. Yeah, I think Ash. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ashlyn just said uh, he was talking about the system and how to pull the information. He said he had to run, but thanks. Uh, and uh, Jordan asked, will the broken colors be added at some point? Now, broken is a unique uh, genotype. Uh, for, uh, for any broken rabbit, you can go into the, uh, the, the edit page of your rabbit and uh, can you reopen your instance for me, Bo? Yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, even though broken isn't a part of the color list, you can always change that. Uh, uh, open the uh, the settings. Oh, settings up here. Um, no, for for the rabbit. The options. I mean, it's the new uh, the oh. new layout. Uh, new for me too. Uh, options. options uh, right options. side. Oh, sorry. Yes. Options. Duh. My bad. Yeah. And then edit. <laughs> edit. Yes. Yeah. And then you'll okay. see at yes. the very bottom. Um, actually, no, with this, uh, with this new update, it's slightly different. You go into the history. History and lineage. But for the old layout, it's all in one page. Uh, you'll see a, a, an option like this, like say, for example, if you have a black and that black happened to be broken, um, go ahead and select black. And it will fill out the genotype here. And then uh, under where it says E-N-E-N, uh, -E -N, you want to change that into a capital. And there you have your broken rabbit. Ah, um, okay. You can also just say in the color list, broken black. Uh, but if you want to keep genotype records, then this is the way to, to update that. And Jordan says, ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's good to know. Okay, and then we'll save it. Um, okay. Yeah, if there's certainly if there's any, uh, any genotype that uh, you feel is missing, uh, or would be a suggestion, uh, we, we do get those from time to time. All right. Yeah, it might be good to do a, a, a zoom session just on the new all the new breeder features, because um yeah, just on yeah. the new features. All the new Link features. On genotypes in. too, because that's a science in its yeah. own right. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be some of our advanced classes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll have to get you and some other experts of, of the genotype. Oh, I'm not uh, that good at it even. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's like a science of its own. 
All right. Well, mm -hmm. with that being said, uh, we did record this uh, and we hope to get this put up on, uh, on, on our new website, actually, that will be uh, everbreed.com. Uh, we'll be coming here in just a few weeks. Um, and if any of you have any questions or any needs, feel free to, to email us, contact us. We've given you like six different ways to reach us. Uh, thanks for taking time out of your busy, crazy schedules with your barn and all the other things you have going on in life to be with us. And we'll have uh, another session next month. Uh, typically, it's the last Friday of the month. Um, and, and so keep an eye out for newsletters and, and our social channels for all that. Thanks again, uh, Bree, for being with me to help, help uh, walk folks through all this. And thanks for everybody for joining. We look forward to having you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.